Hello and welcome to the third part in this look back at Resident Evil Zero, uh, Resident Evil even. It's because I've been doing Resident Evil Zero recently and I'm just tempted to say it. Um, right. Um, I think there's one zombie waiting in here, yeah. Um, another big change is about to be revealed and this really... It's, it's, I think it's a good idea, it's a very frustrating thing. Um, I think it's, it's, it's good, it's... Um, I don't know how to really expand on that. It, it it does add that fear thing to it. Yeah, it didn't go the way I planned. Um, basically, there'll be a memo explaining it better in a minute, but in this version, um, this is the only Resident Evil game that does this, um, and Operation Raccoon City, um, but it does it in a different way. Um, that isn't great, personally. It's not as good as it's done in here, basically. Um, basically, what happened is you'll shoot the zombies. Now, if you don't get a headshot, or their head isn't removed in any way, like if Jill stomp or Chris stamp on their heads, and then come back to life, and um, they'll come back as what's known as crimson heads. Um, the crimson heads are in Operation Raccoon City, but it, they they change in a diff very different way to this. I don't think they actually die. Let's put it that way. I don't think you. I think you just do a certain amount of damage and they just change. But they're easier to deal with in Operation Raccoon City. Um, so you, other than stamping on their head, the only other way to dispose of them for good is light them up, basically. And that's pretty much what that memo was about. Um, but the problem is there's not enough fuel to light them all. Um, so you have to really be smart with it. Um, what I tried to do in the, that bit just there before we come in here is I was trying to make the zombie fall on top of each other. Um, because they fall on top of each other at the right place. And you can light two at the same time. Um, but unfortunately I don't think I got it right. Um, we'll see now. But I don't think I've got done it in the right place. Oh, of course I haven't got the light here. You need the lighter first, which is uh, in this room. This room in Resident Evil, uh, the original Resident Evil, um, isn't. I don't think there's anything useful in it. Uh, there's a book explaining about herbs, and that's it, I think. Whereas this room's actually quite helpful because it's got two key items. Um, I mean, I know the lighter isn't always a key item, but to be honest, if it saves zombies coming back more deadlier than before, then I think it's a key item, personally. And whether or not flame rounds work on it, I've never actually really tried it. Um, but that's why I was saying that in Zero, that Resident, the, the headshots in this Resident Evil are more handier. And that is there explaining about uh, a certain item that we need uh, in a second. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky because the dogs are very hard to fight in this version uh, compared to other versions. Whereas if you shoot them once they sort of fall to the floor but with these they sometimes carry on. Uh, it's very annoying. Um, but now we've got the light we can go and light these two up. Um, if you have, I think it's, okay, I'm not sure how you unlock it but it's called Barry's Samurai Edge, I believe. Um, I do have it on my sister's console. Um, but until I get an SD card, I can't transfer it over, unfortunately. Um, so I'll have to try, I'm hoping to get one. Uh, so, but I might, if I unlock it, it's not going to be too much of a problem. Because um, when I had the GameCube version, I didn't even, wasn't even aware that you could, could get it. Um, whether or not it's a Wii exclusive, I really don't know. I don't believe it is, but I could be wrong. Um, you can also get the rocket launcher. 
And I didn't even know that could happen. Um, where I lit the second zombie, Jill got a little bit burned. Um, she got caught in the fire. I didn't actually... I've always wondered what would happen if you stood on it. Now I know. Yeah, with um, Barry's Samurai Edge, it's like burst rounds and it's... I personally find, found it to uh, be more accurate in getting headshots. So... But the only thing I didn't like is it was unlimited. Well, I don't say it's a bad thing. It's you know it's for a bit of fun, but it wouldn't have been good to show you because it's unlimited ammo, and that would just take the challenge out of it. It really would have. I mean, it's alright for a little mess about and just having a bit of fun. Because um, on the director's cut, I've got a save file with the Colt Python unlimited and the rocket launcher. I think I could be wrong on the rocket launcher, um, and that was fun, but it it takes the challenge out. It, and the fear factor because when you know like a boss like the hunters are coming um, well they're not a boss but they are deadly as you know if you've played the games um, you know when you're just going to fire a Colt Python shot it kills them one time and it's, it's just no there's no fear there so it, that's the only thing I don't really like about it um, but as I said it's, a, it's good for a bit of fun and we're now going to re meet well meet up again with Barry uh, this scene's pretty much the same as it was in the original. Barry. Jill. Got any good news? Other than I'm still alive in this madhouse? No. Can't say it's much safer here either. We'd better secure our escape route first. There's gotta be a back door somewhere. Alright then, let's split up again. Hey, hold on a sec. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. That's the grenade round. What about you? Oh, don't worry. I like the buddy system we have here. I see. Thanks. I'll take it. See you later. Ciao. Um, the dialogue's changed there a little bit. Well, I think it's changed um, because but I've got a vague memory of Barry giving you the bazooka, as it was called. It's called the grenade launcher in this game. Um, but I could be wrong on that. I just remember him giving it to you. Maybe I'm getting confused. I always thought you got it. Uh, well, it's not in the exact same place, but it's in the similar, similar. Well, it's the sort of same sort of location as where we get the grenade launcher in a minute. And we're now going to go and invite a very angry dog. Um, because he's got something we need. I think there's some zombies around here as well. And there also is a few zombies. Uh, what I was saying about the crimson heads. There's a few that have already been dead. And the problem with some of them is you can't get... I find that you can't get to them in time. Uh, so you will have to fight a few crimson heads unfortunately. What I was trying to do there is back into a corner, but I don't think it's going to be as effective. That one. Whoa! Headshot on that dog. Brilliant. As I said before, these dogs are a lot harder to fight um, than the other, well, the ones in the earlier games. Well, I think they. I don't know what that camera was. They're looking zero. They weren't that bad because there's only two, I think, you see in the train. Um, another good thing is they've got herbs, uh, I think they did have in three as well, um, maybe two, I can't remember now, but I think they did, um, they can use the ready preset waiting for you, so that's quite handy. Um, I'm, this is going to be the end for this part, I will come back for that in the next part, it's just I'm trying to make some space, uh, so thank you for watching.